Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to r slash shitty terrariums. Because why, why not? Why, why not get the blood pressure up and going? Oh look, our very first entry. And I would probably jump somebody too if I was forced to live in that time. I and mean, I, I hope he took a big chunk out of him. That would just be... Mm. Can we all just... You know, yeah, guys, minimum length. It's the length of the snake. I know, I know particularly pythons gets very big. That's why uh, you need a lot of room for it. Some more enclosure horror stories from CBR. Behold the beauty enclosure made with calcium sand, no hides, a turned over water pole, used as a basket spot, and poops as dead insect carcasses everywhere. Wow! Damn! There is nothing in there! I mean, you could have decided to do nothing, and it would have been better. Generally, if you if if this place had just maybe a heating lamp, that would probably have been better for it. That's how bad it is. I mean, damn! How can you be that wrong? Uh, hello, I'm looking to rehome my two-year-old corn snake. We call him Finn. We currently we are currently expecting a child and need to make room. He's pretty laid back most of the time. I've never been bit by him. Congratulations. Uh so <laughs> and now that we're expecting now that we are expecting, I I, I just can't. I don't have as much time to hang with him. He eats live and he eats live and frozen pinky mice. Pinky mice. You're feeding it pinkies after two years? I mean, that must be some very small meals. You have to feed him like every day. Can help you load it if needed. He also has a heat lamp fixture, a rock bowl and log. I feed him bi-weekly. He'll eat weekly, but will sleep most of the week if held that often. So I switch bi-weekly. So he'll be more active. Once he gets used to you, he will pretty much just chill with you. Rehoming fee $200 negotiable. Thanks for your interest. Hope to meet you soon. It's just, there's no hides. There's no thing to hide. It's no place to be. It's just like before, you know, doing nothing would probably have been better. And you're still feeling at pinkies. Pinkies. And at this point, it probably should have at least full size mice. Market it as a beauty enclosure. I don't I don't have nothing. Now for turtles. Ten gallon aquarium for turtles with ten gallon. You know the smallest aquarium I currently have is fourteen gallon. Which means that thing is tiny. I, I, I would barely, honestly, th this is my personal view, but uh, a 10 gallon is suitable for a beta, not a turtle. This turtle house from are mildly interesting. Okay, so it's a turtle that's stuck outside. I have no idea where we are, so that might not be a problem. I know here it would be a massive problem. And it, it it has virtually no space. Ah, yeah. You might want to add some space to that. I don't know. Maybe at least four times. What do we have now? This was taken a school. This was taken a school science lab. Say it with me now, kids. Critter keepers are not permanent homes for your lizards. Fuck me, that's a lot of lizards. I mean, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, wait, eleven, twelve, four, thirteen, fourteen lizards in that little box. And it's in a school. I mean, you'd think that teachers are supposed to educate. Um, has this ability to learn themselves and figure shit out. But uh, I guess not. 10 gallon tank with a corn snake. Hey, only 40 bucks. You've really got this. 
the, the effort in this. Wait, is that a live mouse? Yes, it's a live mouse. So somebody keeps a corn snake in this setup, no hides, rocks, some plastic plants, and then uh, just throw a mouse in there because it's not like you know, you increase the risk of potential injury when you keep them in that tiny of a space. When you use live bait, you gotta keep your eye on that. And when you don't have a lot of room, the panicking mouse has nowhere to run, therefore it has to fight. That leaves injuries and rodents have very sharp teeth. Friends to Beardy's in a 20 gallon, he's in charge of a bigger cage, trying for four by two since he's avid on cohabbing and now he colors instead of lettuce however the UB is expired and he feeds mealworms people please learn from this also claims they don't fight which is good I guess yeah just because you don't see it it uh, doesn't mean it doesn't happen and it usually will happen why are people so adamant on cohabbing you want to cohab the animals you keep keep poison dart frogs they are very cute they are very, very colorful. They do take some effort. They're not an easy species, but once you get it, it's actually very giving. That you can go have. Some toads, you can go have some toads, get those. But stop cohabbing species, you're not supposed to cohab. It's just a recipe for something dying. More captive born reptiles bullshit. The shop is located in Columbus, Ohio, and all the animals are kept in shitty conditions like this. We have a some kind of boa constrictor. We got water ball and uh, was it wood shavings is called in English? Uh, that's probably gonna give off uh, wrong humidity and it's not gonna be a great setup. Why are so many places like this? I mean, I don't get it. Here's another beardy. <laughs> it's on calcium sand again, you know. Well done. That's not gonna be a problem later on. And no highs, a rock to climb on, I guess, whatever you're facing, and a water bowl, and that's it. Jesus Christ. This is what happens when you buy an animal you do not know how to take care of. The tank is too small and the axolotl is suffering from gill rot, an extremely painful disease. Pets are not cool fast, you're not accessories. Yeah, that's, that does not look good, those gills. What it is, the frills on it. And the caption says this bitch done ate all her tank mates. Again, no cohabbing. Two green tree frogs for sale online. You think they kept it in that? You think they really did that? First of all, it, it, it's kind of in the name. Tree frog means does not usually live in the water. Uh, usually it's in the trees. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a giveaway. We have a green iguana. I mean, what the actual fuck? You're putting a green iguana in that. I used to go to a school where we cared a little bit more about the animals we had there and there were a green iguana. Our green iguana had an enclosure the size of this room. That is barely the size of my torso. I'll give you an idea of how wrong that is. Critter creepers are for transport, they're not your reptiles prominent home. Maybe this is just it. Again we got a small fauna box or critter creeper or whatever you want to call it and we're putting what is that, a red eared or a yellow eared slider? We're definitely putting sliders in there, and this is. Uh, they need to be able to swim. Why is that such a controversial thing? Wow. Uh, yeah. What do we have here? We have two different species. Let's just get that thing up and running. So we have some kind of fat tail gecko and what appears to be a, okay. Wow, th th that was more. Uh, we got a species of gecko, some kind of fat tail gecko. Uh, we got a bearded dragon, I think, and one or two green tree frogs. 
could be wide lipped. It's a bit difficult from this angle. I have no idea what the hell kind of substrate they're on. It looks like white rolled up paper. And we have three different species with very different needs in one setup. Why? The question isn't actually how bad is this? The question is how often is this the standard? How often is this exactly how it is for God knows how many animals? And people don't know. People really don't know any better. That's the problem. So that's gonna have to do it for today's video. If you liked it, uh, you know, leave a like. If you really liked it, you can subscribe a little. And if not, that's perfectly fine too. And I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.